Hey everyone, welcome to Alchemy with Zero Phase. My name is Eric, and I'm thrilled to have you here. Thank you for joining me as we explore the fascinating world of AI art and creative tools. If you enjoy the content, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more tutorials, tips, and fun experiments. Also, if you're looking to elevate your own creative process, check out ZeroGen, our powerful prompt and image generation platform. You can start using the free version today or take advantage of our three-day free trial for even more features. Check out the link in the description or on the main channel page. Now, let's dive into today's video. Hey everyone, welcome to the video. Uh, this will be a continuation of our last video showing you how to design and build your own uh, prompt generator that you can use uh, at least in ChatGPT, if not other open source LLMs. And we may actually take the one we're building, uh, which we're, uh, the one we're designing right now is a flux prompt generator. And you can take the seed prompt from this, which I'll make available in the, either in the description or on my, uh, my Google Share so that you, you can grab that and use that as a basis to start building your own if you want. But um, we're going to add, in this video, we're going to add the ability for this prompt generator to kind of intuitively, or at least try to get it to intuitively recognize when somebody is requesting text in the image. So we all know that Flux does amazing with text. Uh, the image you're seeing on the screen was an image I generated using Flux. And uh, it's just amazing at being able to do that and still floors me. Like it's still magic to me that they can do that and do it in the way that it does. So we're gonna try that. Um, we're gonna just kind of pick up where we left off here. So here's our current prompt. Uh, right here, we kind of lay down some ground rules. Um, well, they're all rules, but the, you know, some base rules. Uh, the next one just kind of specifies, uh, you know, the user may request more than one prompt. And so what we're doing is we're instructing the AI to kind of be aware of that and um, and how to, how, to, how to respond with that. So uh, we tell it your only expected output are the prompts requested with no commentary, no preamble. Preamble basically is like uh, a comment before the actual product, you know. Uh, like saying, yeah, sure, I can do that. Here you go. Um, so we're <laughs> we're telling you, we don't want that. We don't want any commentary at all. We only want prompts. So um, no instructions or anything else. Multiple prompts are requested. You will include a blank line between each paragraph or prompt. This is uh, I, I feel this is important. I, I specified this in the last video. Uh, it helped me to really utilize it in other things. So something I think I'm going to do we're going to go through and try to do this in this video, get it to recognize and incorporate text in a specific way. And then uh, the next video, I'm going to show you how to use ChatGPT or whatever to program a interface that you can plug this into and utilize to generate prompts like I do on my on my platform, uh, ZeroGen. So we're Basically, we left off here. Uh, I'm going to create a new prompt or a new set of prompts. We'll just make sure we're going to do typically. So when I first started doing this, I was working with GPT 3.5. And it took a lot of instruction to get the same results that I'm kind of getting right now. And it was very limited because of the context length. Like the instructions were so long that by the time it got done, I only had room to request like at, at the most like six prompts, you know, but with how things are right now, I, I you know, we could probably do up to 10 or 20 and do 10 prompts. Um, we'll just say a random underwater scenes with monsters. <laughs> Let's see what it does. So we have an iridescent sea monster, shadowy leviathan. Uh, chubby sea creatures. Okay, those are all kind of cool. And uh, you know what I'm going to do? We're going to just grab, we're going to copy that. We're going to come over here to Stable Diffusion. We're going to just select prompts from file or text box. And we're just going to set this to render these out. And let's flip that around to 1152 by 896. Now we're going to speed it up just a little bit. We'll go back down to the base of 1024, but we're going to do 768 on the width. It's kind of a, a, a dimension I like, or, you know, uh, aspect ratio I like. Drop this down to six steps. We could do four with this particular model, um, but we're going to just hit generate on that. 
we'll watch maybe the first one uh, just to kind of see what it looks like. Should come out pretty quick. My generations on this with the hardware I have, I typically can generate an image uh, even up to 1280 by whatever uh, in about 30 seconds or less. You know, depends on if I ha if it has to load a different model, that kind of thing. So as you can see, it's doing a preview there. That looks pretty cool. So we'll just kind of let that go. We're gonna come back over here, and this gets you know working in the GPT interface can get a little cumbersome when the instructions start to get pretty long. I may end up moving this over to like Notepad++, which is what I would typically do, and then I just copy and paste it in. But I think for right now, we're okay. I just don't like how it kind of limits you on the view right here. Um, sometimes I like to see the whole thing to get a feel for it if I have to move stuff around. You know what's funny is I'm finding I don't have to do a lot of the things I did for my first prompt generator back at, you know, when using three point, uh, GPT 3.5. Um, it was literally a balancing game. It was like... Uh, you, you know those circus acts where they're balancing a plate on the end of a stick you know that's in the, the plate spinning and you got like 15 of those and you're trying to balance them while standing on something that that you're trying to balance there too it was literally like that you make one change somewhere and it broke the whole thing you had to figure out where to change it not so much anymore like it, it's pretty good at understanding the the instructions following the instructions pretty thoroughly and so it's a lot easier to do this okay so what we're going to do structure of a prompt we're going to start here. Uh, the reason why is part of the structure of the prompt will be uh, the text if it's included. Okay. Actually, you know what? No, I don't want to do this because if I put this here, it's going to, at least it's done this before, it's going to just include text randomly. So what we're going to do is right here, uh, text requests. And we're just going to put in some instructions in here. Text requests are user requests asking for an image, but they may request that there is text in the image in various ways. Period. An example would be a user asking for a sign that says something on the sign. Period. I need you to intuitively incorporate that text in the following way at the very beginning of each and every prompt requested. Okay, so what I did there, I'm giving it a paragraph of instructions of, on, on what to expect and what I, what I want it to do, and I'm going to tell it specifically how I want it to interpret this um, at the beginning of every prompt. So if it sees something, which the AI is very smart, it's going to understand the context of what the person's saying. And all we have to do is say, here's how I want you to format it. Okay, so I'm just going to do it just like I do in my other prompt. Um, in fact, maybe I need that as an example here. Let's see. Text, letters, and words. In fact, we're just going to grab this. I'm okay doing this. It's fine. And we're going to say right here, a this creative description of style of the text and how it's applied in the image. Okay, so all we're doing is we're just saying what we want this at the beginning. And then the text request in quotes and then we use and then a lot. Uh, leads the AI from one step to the next. And then a creative description of the style of the text and how it apl it's applied in the image. And then we do, for example, it's okay to use these small examples. They're not the full prompt. All we're doing is we're just giving an example. I'm going to put that right there. Like 
gloves, metallic gloves. Glowing letters at the top. And that is it. We're gonna see if that works. Um, based on its response, we may have to put in some extended instructions. So let's just go ahead and do that. We should still get the same, what kind of prompts can I describe for you? We're gonna do, let's do two prompts. And then we're gonna say, sci-fi book cover style images with different text titles. I'm not being specific. I could be very specific on this if I wanted to, but I'm doing this because I want to test the prompt's capability of handling generic requests. Yep, and I got it. I love these new models. These, you know, the GPT-40 Mini is freaking awesome. Um, text layers and words that say Galactic Odyssey, Chronicles of the Void. Ooh, I like that one. Let's grab that one. See where we're at in the generation over here. It looks like it's done. So all those prompts that we generated earlier, uh, we got ourselves whatever this is. <laughs> There's a Leviathan. <laughs> it has the description now. Playful chubby sea creature. Uh, Multi-headed serpent. Doesn't have multiple heads. Interesting. Uh, underwater dragon. Ooh, octopus behind a, a lurking giant squid extends its tails towards a frightened diver. Okay, cool. That one's cool. I like that one. <laughs> Whimsical cartoonish octopus. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so let's grab this prompt. So we're going to disable this down here. Drop it in up here. And let's change the aspect ratio so that it is more of a, a standard book aspect ratio. I'm going to generate on that. Okay, so we got some words in there. We got, uh, I, don't, I don't remember what the description was. So we got that. So it did, it kind of messed up the word chronicles. We could regenerate this and it'll probably work fine. But metallic lettering, we got that of reflective quality set against a dark, ominous backdrop. You know, featured colossal spaceship now. You swirl, a swirling black hole. Yeah, that's that's great. I love it. Let's generate it one more time. I just want to see if it gets the the words here. Um, what I, you know, what I found is using the one on hugging face uh, versus using one locally, it tends to do the words better, like gets it right more often than not than even the one on on hugging face, the hugging face site. So as you can see, we got what we were looking for. That's pretty cool. Now we could specify, you know, that we want the uh, the lettering at the top because it didn't specify that. So. We can come up here to this one right here. And this is what's awesome about using AI to do your prompt generations at the top. Uh, text on a save icon, sleek future sort of font floating above a sprawling alien landscape. And then, you know, there's arching over a dystopian cityscape. And so we could get even more specific at the top of the page or something like that but these aren't too bad, just for kicks. Oops, don't want both of them in there. Yeah, I did it pretty good. I, it, what's cool is it incorporated as part of the structure of the city here. So, you know, we got Echoes of Tomorrow. And what's cool is you can, now that we've got this, you can actually come in here and manually change this to whatever you want to change whatever it says there. These are just kind of placeholders. So, so that seems to work pretty good. I'm still not happy with um, me specifying the placement and it not incorporating that properly. So what we're going to do is come back up here, go down to our text section, and Text request quotes and a creative description of the style of the text and how it gets applied in the image, for example. The boardroom in metallic glowing letters. We're just going to extend this top of the page, just adding a few more details in there. Rustic book cover style images for a children's western story 
with creative titles at the top. Yeah, there we go. That was good. Embossed across the top. Oops. So let's grab this one here. Test that one. It didn't quite get the lettering. I like the book style and everything. All I would do is just re-render that. And all, sometimes, actually, you, what you do is add sampling steps. Um, sometimes it'll give it a little more time to incorporate the letters and the words. So let's give that a try. And Voyola. That actually looks awesome. Very cool looking. That's something you could <laughs> you could definitely use that. That's, that's pretty cool. So um, the text seems to be working, and uh, the description on that one was that the lettering would be uh, lettering playfully arched at the top, which it does. It arches it at the top of the page uh, in more of a title, uh, you know, larger lettering, which is good, with the images kind of around and below it. Very good layout. Okay, very cool. This actually worked out a lot quicker than I thought it was going to work out. Um, just to play around a little bit more here. Let's do two prompts. Surprise me with images that have creative text. Oops. Now let's just give these a try here. Let's get rid of this. Don't want that in there. Get rid of this, paste that in there, and hit it. All right, that was pretty quick. And this is what we got. I mean, it holds the description really well. Uh, this one here was, let's flip over between those here, that we long Whispers of Autumn, an elegant swirling script, which we got. Golden leaves swirling around the text, which it is. Vibrant scene captures sunlit forest and fiery orange. Yeah, got that, got that. Impressionistic style, rendered in impressionistic style with gentle brush strokes. I don't know about the brush strokes. I don't know, you know, just because it looks more like a out of focus digital image. It's okay. This one turned out really cool. <laughs> uh, let's see, what was the description? Text letters and words that say dreamscape in a bold, luminous typography floating above a whimsical landscape, which it does. The scene depicts a fantastical realm with floating islands. Yep, got that. Composition employs the rule of thirds. Yes, it does. Um, you can see here, here, and here um, is how it divided it up with a soft ethereal glow illuminating the fantastical on the square. It's a real painting style. Yep, looks really good. Now, here's the thing I'm going to say about prompt generators. Um, they, I mean, I love messing with them. You know, honestly, I'll generate random prompts just to see what it creates. I love that. And what's nice about being able to do this though is it generates the base prompt for you giving you something to work from teaching you words you may not have even thought about and giving you a tool that will help speed up creativity i mean that's why i built zero j and i it, it, just, honestly i was getting so tired of trying to type up a decent prompt <laughs> and trying to get decent results you know and I figured it was worth the time to build a prompt generator and I started off with one for stable diffusion and eventually that grew and until I uh, now have prompt generators for flux, stable diffusion, stable diffusion without emphasis, mid journey, Dali, Leonardo. We got music gener AI music generator and a virtual persona generator. So, and I have videos on those other two uh, there as well. But I think what we're gonna do in the next video is I'm gonna show you how to create a basic interface using probably using Python, so you can just run it on your local computer that will allow you to put in an API key, whether that's for a local LLM and, or ChatGPT or any other. We'll get it all set up so that you have something locally you can run that you can request, you know, 50 prompts at a time, you know, and, and be able to use that. So uh, look forward to doing that in the next video, and we'll talk to you all later. Thanks for listening.